Hello everybody, welcome to my video on market segmenting for a monopolist. We're going to envision the monopolist quantity and price decision if they are able to segment their market demand into two different groups. Now normally what we would see, or I guess what we see in our first foray into monopoly is they have one demand curve that is just a straight line and they'll choose their marginal revenue equals marginal cost based on that. But now we've got this weird kinked demand curve, which is the horizontal summation of our other two market demand curves. So the monopolist has the choice of choosing marginal revenue and cost based, marginal revenue equals marginal cost based on this equation or on treating them separately and looking at both of these equations individually. If it's possible to segment the market into two different ones and maximize profit on both, that's where the firm's gonna make the most money. So we wanna look at how that's gonna look. See, before we do that, let's get a, a uh, function for this portion of our market demand curve. I'm gonna invert both of our, oops, I'm gonna invert both of these equations. So let's see, Q D1 is equal to 25 minus 1 fourth P and Q D2 is equal to 75 minus P. Great. And if I wanna get the market demand curve, I'm gonna add up all those quantities. So QD for the whole market is equal to QD1 plus QD2, which is 25 minus 1 fourth P plus 75 minus P. That's 100 minus 5 fourths P. So that is the equation for this portion of the line. Um, ranging from here down to there. A sec. Uh, the equation for this upper portion of the line up until the quantity of, uh, what quantity is that? 100 minus 4Q equals 75. Q equals 25 over 4, which is 0.25. So up until 6.25, we can just use our first demand equation. After 6.25, we now want to use this bigger one. Uh, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you guys just go on faith here. We're gonna assume that our monopolist wants to make more than six units of the good. In which case, we're just going to use our market demand curve. Let me move a couple pieces here real quick. Oops, I lost a five. All right, so we've got our three. So, for those who are looking to pick this video apart, that's fine. Uh, this equation here only represents this portion of the curve. It does not represent the upper part for the lower quantities. I'm aware of that. Now, we want to invert that to make it a inverse demand function. And that's going to come out to P for the market is equal to 80 minus 4 fifths Q. There we go. There's our two equations we can work with. Whew. Now that we got that, we want to compare the profit of choosing a single price for our market demand versus choosing individual prices for our two segmented markets. So let's look at, let's see, 
single price versus for segment one and segment two. And we'll compare the results. So let's see. Let me move some of these down for our convenience. Nope. Sorry, I'm having a hard time here. Oh shoot, this is a waste of time. I will just write it. The PM equals 80 minus 4 fifths Q. If we double that slope, we'll get our marginal revenue curve. Remember, this is a class with no calculus. So 80 minus 8 fifths Q is marginal revenue. For segment one, we've got P1 equals 100 minus 4Q, which means marginal revenue for segment one. My scripts are getting messy. is equal to 100 minus double the slope, 8Q. And for segment two, we've got P2 equals 75 minus Q. So marginal revenue for curve two equals 75 minus 2Q. Great. Uh, let's also remember with our average, with our total cost, if it's 10Q, there's no fixed cost there. And our marginal cost will just be 10. Uh, if you don't have calculus, that'd be given to you. If you do, it's just the derivative of 10Q. So let's set marginal revenue in all of these cases equals marginal cost. So that's 80 minus 8 fifths Q equals 10. That's 100 minus 8Q equals 10. That's 75 minus 2Q equals 10. Notice, they all face the same cost function. Uh, it doesn't cost the firm any different to serve someone in segment 2 as it does from segment 1. Uh, what's different is our marginal revenues based on the individual demand curves. So 70 equals 8 fifths Q, Let's see, 350 over 8 equals 43.75 is our monopolizing, monopolist profit maximizing single quantity, whatever that, whatever I'm trying to say. There you go. Uh, let's see. This is 90 equals 8Q. Q for segment one, if we do it separately, is just 11.25. And if we do segment two separately, that's 65 equals 2Q. 32.5 equals Q for segment two. So first thing to notice is that this plus this equals that. They're going to choose the same quantity in this example. Uh, so quantities are the same, but the price they're going to charge them is going to be different. And so let's get into that. Now we're going to substitute these quantities into the individual demand curves. So let's see. Price is equal to 80 minus 4 fifths times Q, 43.75, which makes price come out to be 45. And that's if we just choose one price. Uh, let's see, price equals 100 minus four times Q, 11.25 which means price is going to come out to be 55. That's for a price for if we charge separately to segment one. 
and price equals 75 minus Q. Oops, I can actually write Q in there. 32.5, which means price is equal to 42.5. All right, so now we've solved for all their different prices. Great. Now the average total cost for this firm, ATC is equal to TC over Q. Well, that's 10Q over Q, which is just 10. So calculating profit for all of them, profit is equal to quantity times price minus average total cost. Let's do that next. Profit. Oh. Profit is, let's see, 43.75 times 45 minus 10. That's profit. And profit equals 1531.25. If we do it just for segment one, I need to mark these. That's for our single market. Profit for segment one is equal to 11.25 times 55 minus 10. Which means profit for segment one is equal to $506.25. And our profit for segment two is equal to 32.5 times 42.5 minus 10. So profit for segment two is equal to 1056.5. So if I am a monopolist and I have the option of segmenting out my market, those two profits combined add up to 1562.5. And that is greater than 1531.25. This monopolist will make more money by segmenting the market and charging different prices to different kinds of consumers than if they just charge one price to everybody. So there's your segmented market in a nutshell. The road was rocky, but I'm too lazy to re-record this. I hope it was useful to you. If not, too bad. Thanks for watching.